Well, welcome to the show. It's week number three of 3HL Weekly. I'm longtime Toronto sportscaster Joe Tilly, joined, of course, as always, by Justin Fox, the founder and president of the 3HL, three-on-three talk hockey. We're talking it all the time. And uh, some interesting news, uh, Justin. You sent me out a, a posting about the uh, about something called fan-controlled football and how it relates to uh, – the three HL. Tell us a little bit about that correlation. Um, yeah. So the fan control football league, I, I don't know exactly. It's funny. I, I was looking it up. Someone actually sent that note to me as well. Um, I'd heard about it maybe a year or so ago, but essentially they've just raised, I think $40 million. They're going into season two. Um, but the premise is that it's a crypto based uh, fan controlled football league where, um, you know, that I think in the article that I, I just forwarded to you, um, you know, people that own the board eight yacht, yacht clubs and different things are now sort of this NFT uh, concept are now people are starting to see how this can play out in in sports leagues. And so I've been working on this type of, of concept for three years now. Um, and that's what backers is. Um, and that's what backers was created to do was create these uh, fan owned. And now the concept is ex- evolved into owned and operated um leagues where the fans not only have a small piece like in a publicly traded company uh but now have actual voting control over maybe not every day-to-day operation or every day-to-day um aspect of the business but have control over you know a large majority of the you know the let's say at the managerial um you know control right so right. voting on maybe who who the who the employees are who the staff are who the management is you know debating whether contracts can you know should be jumped in or not or or should be um taken advantage of or not or or given to certain players um i'm gonna jump in i, I we have a special guest i know oh, we we're kind of let's hesitant. bring him in let's bring him in bring, bring him in. in there we go um there we go bernie what hey i love it you got a little we got to represent here represent yours represent there we go that's right How's it going, Bernie? Uh, good. How are you guys doing? All You're right. Good. Well, welcome to the show, Bernie. Welcome Bernie. to the we show. Are, yes. We don't recognize our man, Bernie Nichols, here. He is the man who scored 70 goals for the Los Angeles Kings, a veteran of the NHL, a guy who should be in the in the Hockey Hall of Fame, and we're pushing in that direction to get you there, Bernie. A uh, longtime NHL veteran. I want to bring you in here to talk, Bernie, about the excitement of 3HL as a former player, three-on-three hockey. Okay. Trying to get uh, a quiet spot. Got it. Trying to get a quiet spot. <laughs> so, but yeah, Bernie, we were just talking about the fan owned uh, football league. I sent a link to the group there. Um, but yeah, just this whole notion or concept of, you know, the exciting three on three, but having the, the fans really uh, being engaged or involved. I mean, you talk about, uh, you know, you're involved in a couple different uh, gambling or betting type environments right so that's a, definitely a way to engage fans but the ability to really get a fan owned and operated or as this, in this case fan controlled uh league that's really what we're growing here with the 3hl well i think um i, I mentioned it the other day it should be similar to like hometown hockey yeah. um i've been involved in two of them because they had it in my hometown and then they went to kingston where uh i played junior and they make a, a weekend out of it and yeah. it's for the kids. There's uh, activities for them to do every day. And I think something like that would work out perfectly uh, with plenty of notice, you know, and you make a, a weekend out of it. And, and and then you get the fans, especially in that little community or whatever city we're in, uh, come and get to participate and, and do different events. I think that's a perfect way of going about it. Yeah, yeah, so let's, I mean, yeah. yeah, go ahead, jokes. Are you? I was just going to say, I was just going to say, I, I like the, the the Rogers hometown hockey uh, way to do things, like, you know, really getting the community involved and really getting the kids into it and and, uh, and bringing it home at that level. I wanted to think, so, Bernie, uh, the question I wanted to ask you, though, too, is, you know, three on three hockey, I mean, w- when you played, uh, you didn't have a lot of three on three uh, opportunities. But, you know, there is there is that in the game today. Uh, what do you think it's like for, for, a, for a player, an aspiring young player? There's going to be some players, you know, uh, we just and I talked, touched on this before, that are really suited for the for a three on three game. And, yeah. And uh, tell us about that. Like, 
I, I probably played uh, my whole career maybe a couple times where you'd have a three-on-three -three situation, right? But I've said this different times. I think the NHL has done that so right right now with um, the three-on-three. -three. It's probably the most exciting part of the game. Uh, anytime it's tied late in the third period, you're just hoping that it gets to three on three. And, and, and you're looking for teams like we watched Colorado the other night. It was actually Colorado and Toronto had a three on three. Um, or you get Edmonton or you get a team that has just some serious talent uh, to, to get six players like that out on the ice at one time. Uh, I don't know any, any fan hockey fan they if they couldn't enjoy that then you, you just don't enjoy hockey because it's there's nothing right. more exciting than that it's fun to watch even even yeah. the uh the all-star game now when they do the three on three i think that was really good I, i've been in, involved in a couple of them and it's five on five and as much as uh, it's not real competitive just because no body contact or anything like that or there shouldn't be so to open it up more like that, to make it more offensive like that, I think the players like it more, and and I'm sure the fans do too. Yeah, and I think it gets more competitive, doesn't it, when it's when it's three on three because you got an opportunity more so to show your skills. The old five on five, go through the motions, no body checking, everybody agrees we're not going to hurt each ourselves here. But when you open up the ice, there's not going to be a lot of checking anyway. No. So when you've got guys who 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 have that open ice. That's when the skill, so the skill of the players, the skills of the players is really on display, isn't it? Yeah, you, you eliminate the, and it's too bad, right? Because there's some good defensive players that probably would be in it, but because it's just strictly uh, three on three, all offense, it's just offensive skill on display for sure. Here, I just I just pulled this up. Here's some uh, three on three action. Whoop. Is it not showing it? No, no, we lost it. It's okay. So uh, uh, yeah, but it, it, it's it, it's uh, you know we, it's tough. You know, going back again to the three on three aspect of it from a you know from a player's viewpoint, from a fan's viewpoint, it, it, it's a pretty exciting thing. And what we were talking about earlier, Bernie, is we were talking about the uh, this investment that the uh, the uh, fan controlled football league is is getting. From cryptocurrency, they just got a forty million dollar influx of capital from uh, investment from crypto. They've got some NFT organizations owning the teams, and uh, it, it's kind of a new wave, of, a new wave of money coming in this cryptocurrency world. And uh, it, it's kind of exciting when you think about the opportunities here for for the three HL. I, I didn't even hear that. Sorry about that. I don't know if it's my phone. Oh, it could uh, be me. I can hardly hear you. Like okay, I've never, be, but I've never heard of that uh, league starting or, or whatever either. But like, so they're in, they're in their second year basically. They basically what happened is um, the the concept of what we're doing with the three HL is kind of the same as what uh, what they're doing, where you know you're allowing uh, essentially ownership of the teams uh, to be the teams to be owned by the community, right? So now you've got thousands of team owners. Um, in each community that are now owning it through the, the use of a cryptocurrency. So the cryptocurrency, uh, instead of having Bitcoin, it would be Barry Colts, right? And so it's the exact same thing. So now if you own Barry Colts token, right, you now own a piece of ownership in the Barry Colts or in the Toronto Bees, let's say, which is, you know, a 3HL team. So the Toronto Bees token or TBT would be a cryptocurrency that would now be owned and off owned by the fans. That yeah. currency would also allow those fans um, would give them access or rights um, or voting or control, depending on how, you know, down the, you know, down the spectrum you want to go to actually influence um, as much or as little of the uh, you know, of the operation of the team, as well as to get benefits of things like, you know, promos, um, you know, different things. You can also add in a, a, a gambling or betting aspect to it. So now you've got fans that own a crypto that represents their team. Um, so we called it, you know, Toronto Bees token. Um, that represents ownership in that team. So the value of that token rises or, or, or goes down or up based on the value of that team and the performance of that team and the underlying aspect of that team. 
And then ownership of that token gives you rights and, and access to certain, you know, benefits, VIP type things, you know, whether it's merchandise or, or different, you know, free, free or discounted, uh, you know, seats or whatever it might be. And it also gives you access or control over the day-to-day -day operations. So it becomes this, you know, really this, um, you know, and people are using NFTs because they're trying to skirt securities laws to, to get around it. But um, it really becomes um, a way to really engage the fans. So you've got, yeah, the fun community events on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, as the events are playing out on the ice in each community as we roll through, you know, each town. But now you've got the actual control and ownership of the teams held by the fans, right? And that's kind of what Backers was created to do, right? Backers is a crypto launchpad that allows for a company, which in this case is a team, to issue a cryptocurrency that represents ownership in their business. Now, what team or what league have they done that with? The, 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 that's what we were just talking about. There's an NFL or sorry, a football league in the U.S. that's now going into season two um, that allows this. So with the, the 3HL, that's kind of the concept that we're, we've been working what, on for three years. That might be Damon Allen has come up. He might be one of the owners in one of those because he, he asked me about that. Uh, where... I just sent a message to to you guys, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of right. interesting, though. But he, he said that it works with you you buy a team, but you can use legend players. You you know, you create your own team. And I guess you can sell your teams and stuff like that. You can be team owners. I wouldn't doubt if that's similar to what uh, – well, that sounds like more of a video game. No, this is like an actual live action football league, right? It's called the Fan Controlled Football League. I believe that's what it's called. The the Fan Controlled. So it's like the T okay, so T F C F L and, and or F C F L. Do that legally? Like yeah, there's no gambling involved in it. That's what backers is. That's literally what backers was created to do to mint those tokens. So they use in our case, we would be using. Um, regulated security tokens that would be issued through a regulated dealer um, through the Ontario Securities Commission. So we would literally be issuing regulated securities as ownership in those teams in the form of a cryptocurrency. So what would the difference of that be and then uh, about all sports market? So that I don't know exactly how the underlying model and I, I'm, I mean, I was at the OSC with you guys three or four years ago. And I, I mentioned that you guys should look at more of the regulated side versus the gambling side. Well, um, we're not on and, the gambling side. No, it was more on the, so it was more on a derivative side. So that's right. Right. But, so I had mentioned the, the whole concept of selling a security, right. Was what backers was doing and that that could be the direction that all sports went in. I think there was sort of uh the understanding that you guys were trying to create a derivative and then you weren't actually selling direct ownership in the business. Right. So that's, that's sort of yeah, interesting. Like we couldn't sell shares at Toronto Maple Leafs. No. So you would right? create a derivative of it, but we create a platform where, you know, you can own a piece of the Toronto Maple Leafs just in, in this, uh, and everything works the same way. It, it's by, you're buying stocks in it, but you, you just don't have, uh, shares in the, the lease per se, yeah. like uh, Green Bay Packers is the only publicly traded uh, sports team there is. So exactly, I don't know how you know you can do this with without the league permission for one, right? Um, well, we are the league. That's the cool thing, right? Okay, with you're the league here, but you said an NFL team. You couldn't do this with the NFL or the the NHL. Where people they, are, they could if they weren't publicly traded companies. Um, so well, the so the, the, the whole place isn't publicly traded. Yeah, MLSE is. That's so they're so they're held by a publicly owned and not publicly traded corporation. Okay, the New York Yankees are not, and the New York Rangers are not. So they could tokenize the, their assets and they could mint their own cryptocurrency and create their own security right. token. Yes, like this, Very this, cool. this. That's literally what Backers has been doing. I'll, I'll, throw yeah. the, I'll throw the logo up there just so everyone can see what we're talking about. That's literally what uh, we've been I creating think I with get Backers. I back in a call with uh, the ASM group. 
Yeah, we. I mean, I, I presented the concept of backers to them when we went to the OSC that one time about yeah. the concept of actually creating own, like direct ownership, right? And, and it's an actual security token that represents direct ownership. So we use the term with backers, private is the new public, meaning no business really needs to go public. You can issue private securities in any jurisdiction across North America, at least, um, and you can raise any amount of money. There's really no cap on how much you can raise. And you can now have a privately held company with a publicly traded security token on an exchange like backers. Very cool. Right. So now we with backers, obviously, we go out into the broader market um, and allow for any business to actually you know, issue these tokens. Right. So what happened in 2014? 12, let's say, you know, Vitalik Buterin, Canadian kid, um, he wrote the white paper for Ethereum, essentially stating, you know, you've got Bitcoin with its blockchain, underlying technology, distributed ledger, um, but they were going to add these smart contracts, essentially programmable um, rules or instructions on the on these tokens, right? So now you could, you know, with Bitcoin, it's just buy, sell, right? It's just a ledger, transactional ledger, who bought, who sold. With Ethereum now, you have these smart contracts that you can build in all these different rules and regulations. So what we've done with backers is we've taken that, that token, that tokenization of the asset with the underlying rules and regulations written into the token. And now instead of issuing a share certificate, the paper-based share certificate, again, the idea came from the Green Bay Packers, you know, when I was looking at this in 2015, um, you know, instead of having a share certificate, now they're issued a security token. So it's a digital representation of the actual, you know, share or, or, or stock in that private company. And now I hold it on my digital wallet. We can take it the next step with the 3HL. We're going to do this where people can now own actual pieces of the 3HL as in the form of a, of a cryptocurrency or security token. Um, and now we take it one step further. Ownership of that token gives you other access, other rights. So whether we, we embed some sort of, you know, remuneration, you know, in the form, almost like gambling, but you're getting, you know, a dividend back when they win, or you can get into things like VIP style, you know, type, um, you know, things of, of, you know, free merchandise or discounted merchandise or, you know, whether maybe it's, uh, you know, discounted tickets to events, whatever it is. And then the third aspect is allowing them to actually have, you know, call it voting control. And this is where the blockchain, one of its biggest use cases is voting control, where now you can just on a simple app say, hey, we're doing this to all the fans that own this token, send them a notification, say, hey, should we hire this GM? Or should we you know, do this or should we do that? Or should we, you know, what should our new logo be or what should our new colors be? Or, you know, should we change our team name? Or we're thinking of migrating from this community to this community. Maybe we started in Tilsonburg and, or, you know, Leamington, but we want to, you know, move to a bigger venue or bigger, you know, community so that we can have more support. You know, we're going to move to London or Toronto or New York city, whatever, right. That all those, those are just nuanced votes, but all those can now, be controlled or some of them can be controlled by this, you know, popular vote of the, of the fan owned team. Right. It can start with, uh, it can start with name the team. Well, exactly. It can start with any, I mean, we can start anywhere, right? It can start with, even if there's going to be a team in that community, right? I mean, let's let buy a thousand coins of a, of a team and let's pick where that team's going to be. Right. And you could start going, I mean, there's a million ways, you can kind of start it out, but um, yeah, I think it's it's sort of like, hey, we're gonna put a team in this community. Um, you know, w- what are we gonna do next, right? And then what are we gonna do next? And what are we gonna do next? Well, it's an interesting concept, and it's totally foreign to what we've seen before. Right? Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, well, imagine. That's... I mean, just saying with Bernie, like imagine having a general manager who is uh, a thousand fans. Well, this, I don't know if you, and this is some of the, some of the sports um, heads, if you will, um, have, have put in this thing of, you know, we talked about this the other day, you know, owners meddling in the day-to-day operations of a, of a sports team, right? You know, I brought up the Sacramento Kings owner, you know, kind of meddling 
there's a video of him Harold handling Ballard. in the draft, right? right? Yeah, we talked about some of the you know the old hockey you know hockey greats that have you know meddled in in the management of the team. I, I don't know if you want to get in, and obviously you can't control the on ice play. I mean, the players are going to go out and do what they got to do, right? But I, I think there's definitely areas of the of the team that typical ownership groups might control where now you you hand that over to the fans <laughs> are, are we uh what, what do you your, think what do you think bernie's, bernie's know, thinking there he's like wait a second no, it sounds great it really there's a lot does. to take in there's a lot to take <laughs> in sure, how to but... do it that's all i'm good yeah, yeah. well that that's yeah. i mean that's where backers comes in right backers yeah. is, is we're building out this tokenization of assets platform right and you know, everyone's everyone thinks cryptocurrency is is Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is one of probably ten thousand so-called bit uh, cryptocurrencies out there, and I would say ninety-five percent of them are not actual currencies per se, but more um, ownership tokens in a project, right? So they're they're more whether they're an actual security or not remains to be seen. Um, you know, and and they're they're you know people are arguing utility tokens. And different aspects of it and i mean i'm not going to get into everything right, about right. blockchain but um and crypto but that's essentially what backers so five years ago i identified the idea of having team or or, or community owned teams as being the way forward for the 3hl i then started backers when i identified that cryptocurrency was the easiest way to facilitate that team or that community owned uh, aspect because traditional you know, traditional uh, software, if you will, is expensive, costly, um, can be altered. So there's a lot of corruption that can happen with with blockchain and cryptocurrency. A lot of those, you know, costs are reduced. Um, the immutability and the security of the token on the blockchain, you know, alleviates corruption and and bad actors, and really allows for you know much more seamless uh, approach. Right. So now you have. The Toronto Bees, owned by a million fans in Toronto, you know each one, each of them have you know one token. Let's say, morning, the sure. Tron- yeah, right. And when the and when the Toronto Bees win, you know we will have some sort of trickle down uh, that will benefit that will go to those shareholders in the form of whatever that is, right? So mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and that's so there's money, there's kind of benefit or, or 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 economic value coming in through the form of sponsorships and ticket sales and merchandise and all these different business aspects. And then they're flowing through the players and the fans, right? So now you've got this, I mean, the, the concept is play to earn on video games, but literally the players will be playing to earn. They'll hold a token and they'll hold it in perpetuity. So if you play, you'll get issued a token. That token then will be valuable in and of itself and will provide more value as that team progresses and money flows through it. So now past players will still benefit from current performances on that team. So it's kind of cool to get in early and be a, you know, an early adopter as a player and you'll get tokens and you'll be able to earn more today than maybe the people that earn tokens 10 years from now uh, when they're playing. Right. So it's almost the inverse of what happened in, in most pro sports where older players kind of got, um, got less than, than what their, you know, their, their younger counterparts have gotten, right? So it's kind of, it'll be interesting how we roll this all out. Um, you know, obviously with backers, we've been working on this for three years now to build out these tokens, these smart contracts and really build up the infrastructure um, so that we can roll it out with the 3HL. Well, it's exciting stuff. I mean, it's, it, to me, to me, the, the potential is, is there for some pretty big stuff and it, it it's, it's, it's next level stuff is what it is. It's, 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 uh, it's really, you know, uh, top of the food chain when it comes to uh, crypto and the, the changing universe that we're in, and, and uh, it's pretty exciting. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, Bernie. So I know I I can see the the thoughts spinning there. We we I'm should talk off different yeah. teams and stuff or different leagues that you could like. Oh yeah. With. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I, like I know. Uh, the, the, well, I played with uh, Brent Sutter. He he runs the uh, uh, Western Hockey Junior League. Yeah. Out west, you know. Uh, I'm friends with David Branch here for the OHL, but 
Um, I don't know. I think there's so many leagues that you could hit oh, yeah. with that. Yeah, with backers, I mean, that's the whole idea. We, we want to – I mean, we were going to go out with this whole sports focus. Um, it just seemed like the sports world was not ready to adopt it three years ago. Um, so we kind of looked at, you know, traditional entrepreneurs and saying, hey, you want to raise capital, this is how you do it. Uh, but that's that's exactly what backers is. Um, and we're going to – you you know, the 3HL will be the sort of the test ground, you know, the, the use case – to show how it all works. And then the 3HL becomes the, you know, the default league that's using this, this concept. And how about like uh, the Ontario or the Canadian uh, basketball association? Yep. Would you, that would help them raise money too, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. See, I know the, the guy who runs that, uh, Mike or even the CFL, anything here in Canada to help. Right. Yep. Uh, I, I've worked with the, the Canadian or the CFL people too. So I think any, like, especially the Canadian. Yeah, there's a lot of potential. Need help with money. Yeah, for sure. Right? Yeah, no, for sure. And that, and that's, and that's the whole, the whole concept of backers, right? Is, is this ability to tokenize the asset, um, whatever that is, which is typically the ownership in a corporation, right? You can also do, you know, units in a fund. So real estate is another area where this is, this is prominent. Uh, or can be utilized. But yeah, in, in the sporting world, um, instead of just having sort of like, you know, rewards or, f- you know, fan based points or whatever, it's actual hard ownership in a private company um, that's tokenized. And now the tokenization, what it does is it, it puts it on the blockchain. So again, the security, the immutability, all that's there. But it also now uh, makes it a lot easier to flow from one to the other, right? So you can tr- have that tradeability. Uh, amongst fans, right? So it really becomes, you know, like a secondary stock exchange with these privately held companies. Again, exactly what we've been building with backers over the past, you know, sort of three years. Uh, mm-hmm. we're, we've actually issued the backers uh, security token, our, so our cryptocurrency, which is the BKRS token, backers token. Um, and so that's, you know, we're selling that right now um, on the on the backers site. We're just kind of rolling through that a little bit, but people can now invest in the backers platform, which is the underlying, if you will, you know, launchpad incubator of all of these, you know, these cryptocurrencies in Canada, these regulated right. cryptocurrencies. So the three HL is going to be the proving ground for all of this stuff. One of, which, one which, of. Which, 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 yeah, which is going to, you know, uh, you know, I'm assuming this is going to be big. I mean, it's going to change uh, the, the way we look at a lot of different everything sports for sure and like, as bernie alluded to i mean it can help cfl it can help junior hockey it can help a lot of different different aspects of it and and uh yeah it could be it could be really really big and, and uh it's exciting to be part of this and i think next time we we get we, let's we, let's get into this a little bit further in this part of it uh in this part of the business model we, we should kind of do that yeah, yeah, definitely. One of the things I want to talk to sort of, uh, you know, I, I guess if we're looking at sort of the concept of the 3HL, right, you've got, um, you know, if we have 64 teams, that's 64 different tokens, right? So you've got 64 fan bases that can now buy in thousands of them, tens of thousands of them, millions of fans on each token, right? And each token can be worth, you know, whatever, one cent, 10 cent, a dollar, doesn't matter. Um, per token, right? And so that that team can now go out, sell this cryptocurrency token, security token to the fans, raise the capital. So that initial influx of money comes into the team. And now the fans are rewarded with their support and engagement. And they actually are owners and operators right. of the team, right? So it, it's, you know, now you've got 64 currencies on the 3HL exchange, right? And you've got, you know, though that's, Right. It's really the model. And, and I, I right. know you're the all sports market model. Right. It really should have been crypto based and right. security that, based. That's, right. That that's taking your fantasy. That's taking your fantasy right. to that's, the next level. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You kind of cut out there. You OK? Yeah. Are you OK, Joe? Right. But that's taking that fan you know, you know, uh, fantasy, fantasy to the next level. I mean, this is, this is taking it to the next level where I might be cut up, but, uh, anyway, it's taking it to the 
next level. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not, but we're kind of we're you're cutting in and out. You're cutting in, but yeah, it's, it's going to take fantasy sports to the next level. Now it's not just a matter of you know I I you know yeah. in one in one case you're kind of you know uh, playing fantasy sports against you know with with a, a roster that you've devised yourself. Now you're literally as a fan, an owner, part owner of a team. And you control and operate the the day to day activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, incredible! It's great. Next level, beautiful. That's that's it. And and, and you know what? If you want to all, all sports, yeah. we should talk about that because I, same thing. I mean, this is what I was trying to say with with Jason. Oh, did we lose Joe? I was trying to say with you know with some other people there that you know if you take the crypto aspect and you tokenize the underlying security of a team now you now you have that that similar to what you guys were trying to sort of build out but now you actually have ownership and here i'll give you another example just to kind of throw a i came across this thing i forget the exact name is i think it's called the klaus club or Kraus club they have what's called the flight paper which is kind of a play on words for a white paper essentially what they're doing is they're creating what's called a decentralized autonomous organization or a DAO, they are now raising money for that DAO from fans. And their goal is to go out and buy an NBA team. I think it'd be great for, um, you know, Canadian basketball league or, and the junior hockey. I, I think it'd be great. I think we can uh, do something there. And the three HL as well. All, all well, three of them. That's a given. That's the yeah. given, right? Yeah, but for sure, yeah. the other ones. I mean, let's. I I think it, the model can be used across the board, right? And as okay. a fan, you might hold a hundred different tokens, right, or fifty different yeah. tokens. You know, every you know every sort of affinity or you know that you have, right? Or or you know, you mentioned that you're you know alumni of the Kingston Frontenacs, you know, obviously LA Kings, you know, Oilers, you know, alumni of you know you know grew up here that, you know, they've got all these different affinities. You could have a hundred different tokens, one for each, you know, each team you support or organization that you're a part of. I wonder of. if we had talked to um, Glenn Healy. He's uh, runs the uh, NHL players alumni. Like that would be something that, he could do for all the alumni teams around, you know, players around the league. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I, there's a million and way, a million and one ways this can be. I I'm glad that it's sparking um, some thoughts there. Cause that, this is kind of the excitement I've had with this for three or four years, basically yeah. five years now, six years. I don't know. Time flies. What what year are we in again? Twenty? Is it two thousand? Is it twenty twenty or where are we? I don't know. There you go. Um, but yeah. Anyways, twenty twenty two. So yeah, since twenty fifteen. I mean, this has kind of been what uh, what we've been working on with backers and you know, sort of in the background to build out for the three HL. Cool. Cool. Well, we lost Joe. Yeah, Bernie. I appreciate you joining me. I know. Uh, I love the the background there. You and your. Uh, are those some of the what deer you've hunted? Yeah, we got those ones over there, a little bigger. Oh, there you go. Sweet. Cool. Well, oh, lots of them, right? Eh? Are you going out this afternoon? <laughs> All right, bud. Is it cold out it. there? Yeah. Pardon? Is it cold up there still? Oh, fuck yeah. Terrible. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, bud. Thanks. Cheers, bud. Bye.